Alright, thanks for watching and today I want to present you a really neat proof of Taylor's theorem and to be honest I don't know why people don't know more about that proof because it should be like available everywhere. It's so cool. You'll see. What I'm saying is no one really proves it that way but people should prove it that way. It's cool. Namely, again, what does Taylor's theorem really say? It says that f of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. That's sort of the uh, like calc to a definition of the uh, you know, linear approximation. But you can go more than that plus f prime of a over 2 factorial x minus a squared. And in fact, up to as many derivatives as you want as long as this makes sense, as long as f is n times differentiable, plus, in fact, some junk, where that junk is very small. In fact, we can show that the junk is less or equal to some constant times x minus a to the n plus first power. So if a is close to x, it's even smaller than uh, know, x minus a to the n. And let me give you a proof, at least in the uh, case where n equals to 2. And you'll see it's um, unbelievable, as I said. So let me, let me erase that. In other words, we just want to show this term. This is true. And it's just repeated application of the fundamental theme of calculus. Because what is f? So f of x, well, it's equal to f of a, but to remedy this, this is f of x minus f of a. So f of a, it's very good. We have it here. And this, you can write as an integral of a derivative. So it's really the integral from a to x, f of, let's say, x1 dx1, f prime, sorry. So it's the integral of f prime of x from a to x. And notice if you calculate this, you get f of x minus f of a. So this gives us the first term of the Taylor's formula. And now let's just continue like that. So f of a plus integral from a to x. And now we want a f prime of a. So let's just write it as f prime of a plus f prime of x1 minus f prime of a dx1 and let's just split it up so that's f of a plus here comes the cool thing this f prime of a comes out an integral of 1 from a to x is just x minus a so you have that plus integral from a to x of f prime of x1 minus f prime of a dx1. So again, you have the second term in the Taylor's formula. So it's really neat. And this thing, you can also write it in terms of an integral. So that just equals to f of a plus f prime of a x minus a plus integral from 0 to x integral, that's right, from a to x integral from a to x1 of f double prime of x2 dx2, right? Because again, applying the fundamental theorem of calculus, the integral of f double prime becomes f prime, so we get f prime of x1 minus f prime of a, so dx2 dx1, and then you can just continue the same way in fact, you can do this as many times as you like. So, so that's f of a plus f prime of a x minus a plus, again, integral from a to x, integral from a to x1, and then f double prime of a plus dx2 dx1 plus integral from a to x, integral from a to x1, f double prime of x2, dx2, dx1. 
Now, this thing just comes out f of a plus f prime of a x minus a plus f double prime of a and you're left with integral from a to x an integral of 1 from a to x1 which is just x1 minus a dx1 because again the integral from 1 from a to b is just b minus a and um, let me see, if, do I need a triple integral? Yeah. Uh, sorry, of course, because I wrote this wrong. Sorry. dx1 plus integral from a to x, integral from a to x1, uh, f double prime of x2 minus f double prime of a dx2 dx1 okay and let's just continue so it's f of a plus f prime of a x minus a plus now this constant we can just pull it outside of the integral and you're left with integral from a to x integral from a to x1 of 1 dx2 dx1 and the other term we can just write it in terms of a triple derivative, ax1 integral from a to x2 of f triple prime of x3 dx3 dx2 dx1. I guess the issue with this, I guess, is just you need an extra derivative. I guess that's fine. And now, integral from a to x1 of 1 is just x1 minus a. Because the integral of 1 from a to b is just b minus a. And all you have to do is evaluate that. So it's f of a plus f prime of a x minus a plus f double prime of a. Now an antiderivative of that, you can actually write this in terms of follows. x1 minus a squared over 2. And that's from a to x. But notice, if you evaluate this at a, you have 0. So what you're really left with is just x minus a squared over 2. And then plus this thing, which I like to call the junk. So let this be the junk. The junk. And that's great. We have shown the following. We have shown Taylor's formula, right? With n equals to 2. The only thing we need to show is that this junk is small. So, so let's just take absolute value of the junk and see what happens. So junk is less than or equal. So that's equal to the absolute value from a to x, a to x1, a to x2 of f triple prime of x3, dx3, dx2, dx1. Now, by the triple triangle inequality, you can just put it inside x1, a, x2, f triple prime of x3, dx3, dx2, dx1. And well, at least, you know, if x is close to a, and we assume that f triple prime is continuous, then in fact, it is less than or equal to a constant. So let this be less than or equal to m. Then we can pull this m outside. So it's really the triple integral of m of blah, blah, blah. So it's really m times the integral from a to x, integral a to x1, integral a to x2 of 1, dx3, dx2, dx1. Okay, and that's all in good. And now all we need to do is evaluate that integral. So integral of 1 from a to x2 
that's x2 minus a. And now the integral of that is n times the integral from a to x of x2 minus a is squared over 2 from a to x1 dx1 and you see if you evaluate that at x1 you get x1 minus a squared if you evaluate that at a you get 0 so you're left with m integral from a to x of just x1 minus a squared over 2 dx1 and if you evaluate that you get m times x1 minus a cubed over 3 factorial from a to x and this just becomes m x minus a cubed over 3 factorial. So after all this change of inequalities what have we shown? We've shown indeed that the junk is at least less than or equal to m over 3 factorial x minus a cubed you know, I guess assume x is bigger than a, and we can also do it in the reverse direction, so that's fine. And uh, that equals to a constant times x minus a cubed, where that constant is just m over 3 factorial. In other words, if you, to a second, uh, second degree Taylor polynomial, then the junk, the error term, is in fact of the form something times x minus a cubed which is exactly what we wanted, and therefore Taylor's formula has been proven, at least in this case. And of course you can also see the pattern appearing where you can do it for any n. So I think it's really neat, people should know more about that proof, but if you want to see more math and more calculus, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.